Hi folks, Glenn here. I'm just sat here finishing off writing up a tutorial for a future magazine article where I take you through the retouch showing all the steps that went into the picture that you can see on screen now. So we go through the camera raw conversions, we do dodging and burning, adding in the light and the dust and all that kind of stuff. But that's not really the focus of the tutorial, although obviously that's what you're going to learn. The main thing that I'm trying to get across is working what we call non-destructively. Now, I think most people who have been around Photoshop for a while now, they understand what working non-destructively is. And basically what that is, is it means that we work in such a way that means later on, at another later date, we can come back to the file and change anything at all. So, for example, in the picture that we can see on the screen now, we've got the layers or most of the layers that go to make up the final image from the original raw file. And the great thing is I can come down to any of these layers and make alterations. So I could go to the dodge and burn layer, I could go to the dust layer, I could even go to removing the light stand, I can even go back to the original conversions that I did within Camera Raw. So this is completely non-destructive. Now when we're doing non-destructive work within Photoshop, we tend to find now that we're using smart objects quite a lot. They play a huge part in working non-destructively. The great thing about them is we can maybe do things like um, applying filters. Now, whereas before when we'd be uh, before they were around, we'd go and apply a filter if we'd applied it too much or not enough, and then clicked OK, we were kind of stuffed. We had to go back and do it all again to then apply the filter and try and get it right. With smart objects, we can convert objects for what are called smart filters, apply a filter if it don't work, if it's not enough, we can then jump back in and change it. So people kind of understand that side of smart objects. But even that isn't what I want to talk to you about. What I want to talk to you about is something that I'm calling the secret power of smart objects. So what do I mean? Well, nowadays you might find, you might be one of those people that sees the spinning wheel of death a lot more, or you've got the hourglass where the computer's kind of struggling to process what it is that you're doing. Obviously nowadays with bigger and better camera sensors coming out, with that comes bigger file sizes. And I know because I've just recently or fairly recently upgraded to a Nikon D800 and my file size has increased massively to what it was before when I had a D3. So obviously that increase in file has meant that I've had to upgrade computers, we've upgraded RAM and other ones just to try and cope with the file size. Because some of my images will very easily and quickly go to one gig, two gig and beyond. And that can really call on all that your computer's got to process it. So I want to talk to you then about the secret power of smart objects and how it can help you. Here's how you can kind of trick your computer into thinking the file you're working on is a smaller file size. And that sounds kind of crazy, but let me explain. In the bottom left-hand corner of my screen, when my file's open, I've got a couple of numbers. Now, if you can't see the numbers down in the bottom left down here, you've got a little arrow with like a fly out menu and you'll get a number of choices if you click on that. If you click on the one that says document sizes, you'll see two numbers and they're separated by like a, a forward slash. Now, my numbers, they say 206.9 megabytes or 206.9 megabytes forward slash 714.6 massive megabytes. So what does that mean? Well, those two numbers, here's those two numbers now. The right-hand side number, that is the actual file size now of the image that you're working on. So as you add all these layers, this number on the right-hand side here increases, increases, and increases. So already this one here is massive. It's almost three quarters of a gigabyte. So that's starting to really call on my computer to work hard. Now the number on the left hand side is what your file size would be if you completely flattened all those layers. So 714.6 megabytes, if you flattened it so you lose all those layers and just make your image into one layer, it would become 206.9 megabytes. Now that sounds great because that would mean your computer's not having to work so hard, your workflow will speed up and all that kind of stuff would be great. However, that wouldn't be working non-destructive. And that's the kind of focus that we want here. We want the flexibility of being able to come in at a later date and make alterations. If we flatten it, we can't do that because we lose all the layers. So here's the trick. Now, 
Here is my image with all these layers in, all non-destructive, all using smart objects. But the file size, as we know, is 714.6 megabytes. Now what I'm gonna do is, I've got my uppermost layer selected. I'm gonna hold down my shift key and click on the bottom layer. So now all of the layers are selected. Now, once they're all selected, I'm gonna to go to the fly out menu at the top right of the layers panel, and I'm gonna choose convert to smart object. So when I do that, Photoshop's gonna take all these layers and put them into one single layer, which is a smart object. So it'll appear like this. So we can see one layer, we've got the little smart object symbol in the bottom right hand corner, which means we've still got all those layers, but now they've been put into one layer, so we're still working non-destructively. I could now carry on retouching. I could then keep on working, but why would I do that? Well now, if we go back to these numbers in the bottom left, do you remember it said first of all, 206.9 megabytes was the first number, and that's what it would be if I'd flattened it and lost all the layers. But now, the number next to it, the second number, is also, 206.9 megabytes. So it's kind of become the file size as if I'd flattened it, but I haven't. I've only created it into a smart object. I've still got all my layers here, but at the moment, Photoshop has been clever. Photoshop has created this smart object, and because it's not now doing things like process and adjustment layers and all that kind of stuff, it's almost like virtually decrease the size of the file. It's tricking your computer into thinking the file size is actually smaller. So the knock-on effect of that is you can carry on retouching now, adding more layers and do it and carry on and go through the whole process, but your computer thinks the file size is smaller. So you're gonna be able to work quicker, you're gonna see less spinny wheels of death and all that kind of stuff. So the whole thing is gonna help you to speed up and get more work done a lot quicker. But here's the thing, it all sounds great, the fact that this file size has been decreased. That's only a virtual file size reduction because once we've done all our retouching and we save this image on the computer and if we right clicked and said get info or we wanted to check the actual file size itself outside of Photoshop, it will be back to the original. So for example, this one here, once I've saved it out of Photoshop, would then end up being 714 megabytes. But while it's in Photoshop, Photoshop's being really clever and tricking the computer into thinking it's a smaller file size. So that's the what I'm calling the secret power of smart objects and how it can really help you and help your computer not to work so hard. So I just thought I'd put that together for you. Hope it's useful. Obviously you can subscribe to my YouTube page or my YouTube channel by clicking on the button that you can see on the screen now. And on there I've got, I don't know, over 120 odd videos of all kinds of things. And obviously there's also my weekly photography, Photoshop and Lightroom video podcast type show. So make sure you subscribe not to miss any of the videos. And uh, yeah, I shall see you next time.